Bambini Tati. Wonderful people, you're welcome to the discussion segment of the Bambini TV. I'm your host, Vera Otio Echampa, and I'm here with two very beautiful sisters. Please, what's your name? I'm Abena. Angel, Wow. So today we're going to be talking about dating on campus or in schools. So first, I'll go to Abena first. Abena, this topic, hmm, it's very heated. So what do you think about dating in schools? Dating, I would say, isn't a bad thing, but on the notion, especially mixing it with studies, that I would say, in some time, on a pause, not everybody will be able to adjust dating and in studies. Somebody can fall in love to the extent that you wouldn't even know where the heart is, and then the books won't, will be found wanting. So I would say, dating on campus is good and bad. So for mine, dating is a very bad thing on campus. It's a very bad thing because it will distract you from your studies. You, instead of people learning in the class, you will be outside with your boyfriend whilst not listening to what the teacher is saying or teaching. So I think it's a bad thing. Okay, very good contribution. So personally, hmm, it depends on your level of education. If you are in, let's say, university, or college, it's not very, it's not very bad. You can actually do when you invest your credit card. By that time, you'll be developed and you'll be on your own because 18 is a legal like adult age yeah, in sure. Ghana. You're yeah, matured already. So nobody has to come and regulate you, so you should know. But if you're in JHS or SHS, that one, please, my sister. What if I found my love in JHS? What are you trying to tell me that unless I get to university before, I have to. It is love we are talking about here. You can't, you can't block me from facing what I have encountered. It is heart matter. Hello, education. Education is a different thing from love. My boyfriend can help me in my studies. But and no, your boyfriend is not the reason why you came to school. My, my boyfriend is not the reason why, but it is because of the rope the um, bed is able to see the sky. No, at your age, it's not love, it's lust. So you are wrong. If there is true love. If you've not encountered it, it doesn't mean it's not existent. <laughs> Hey. Wait, the fact that you've not encountered doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Oh, why? Why are yeah. you doing this to me? I, you are a sellout. You are selling me out on the show. No, I'm not selling you out. This is love issue. And dating is true. This is, oh, sweetheart. Let me, let me tell you something. There are people, I know married couples who have married for the past 10 years. Do you know when they started dating? From primary four. Yes. So if you didn't find your true love, if you haven't found your true love, the fact that I'm dating doesn't mean I'm doing something awkward. No. You are in class listening to what the teacher is saying. Meanwhile, you are also outside around some corner be with your boyfriend. My time, there was something called caffeine. That is after preps. So you, I will go to class, do my studies. When it's almost, you know, Prep close at 9 p.m. But we will close at 8.30. And at 30 minutes, it's for caffeine. All work and no play. Make Jack said, oh, but in fact, my boyfriend will even help me. Hey. Exactly. So it means that I can be doing my dating thing and then be doing my thing. Yeah. You are, for example, you, for example, you are, you are below average. And your boyfriend is also below average. How can you guys help each other? Eighteen and above. I am eighteen years and below. I am fifteen years. I have feelings. Yes, but you have to control the feelings. Loving someone or dating someone, we Ghanaians are always putting it on a bad perception. You can be dating somebody without sexual activities. We will go out. We will have fun. I need help. You help me. Because we are not mature to give birth or we are not on that stage yet. When we are dating, we will know how to take care of ourselves. But we will 10 years. At the end of the day, she will not give birth or not even get pregnant. But those that will be doing holy call, Mama Jesus, we are not dating, we are not doing that. At the end of the day, they will come up with three children. You ask, how come did they get pregnant? You see. I know some people who started dating from SHS. 
And when they go to university, you know, university, they have fine girls, fine yeah. boys and stuff. Left the girl there. And the girl was a, selling pure water. I Meanwhile, well, the boy was also thinking of high things, you know. My sisters, Abna and Angel, please give me your last words, our viewers, and let's say bye. I stand against the motion because I'm not agreeing to what my sister here is saying. So I want you I want to tell you that focus on your studies and become someone great in future. You know who knows? You'll be someone great. If you are dating, the boy will distract you. You'll be thinking of the boy whilst you have to take your books and learn. What I will say is that dating is a very good thing, especially when you find the right partner. The fact that people go to school, date, and at the end of the day get dumped doesn't mean you are also going to face the same thing. Just know what you, ha you have to do. That is what I'll always do. Just do the right thing at the right time, and your Mr. Right or Miss Right will find you. What I have to say is that please focus on your education because dating is not the reason why your parents brought you to school. Woman meets you here. She's thinking that her daughter is learning. I'm learning. But no. I find love. Please. Please. Ah, Abna, I please. Know, we, are we are close. We are close. We are close. But you guys are putting everything on me as if I'm the devil here. <laughs> but what I am saying, it's right. My boyfriend is helping me in school. Um, sometimes even our parents are not in the picture. They pay our school fees for us. They give us some stuff. Whilst our parents at home are even suffering. Thank you very much for tuning in to the discussion segment. Please join us same time next week. Thank you very much. And send your comments to the WhatsApp number below on your screen. I'm Vera Otiri Champa and I was your host with... Abna Ahunye. And... Okay, thank you very much for joining. Please, my beautiful ladies, put a smile on your face. Let's say bye. 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 Hello, viewers. Welcome to another edition of our digital class. My name is Nicholas, your music teacher. As we all know, what we are fighting against coronavirus, we're supposed to sanitize our hands before we start. So I'm doing mine. Okay. All right, so we are going to continue from where we ended the other time. And before we do that, there are some people we have to acknowledge. I gave an assignment last week, and they did it very well. Person like Kelvin, we were told to draw 10 treble clefs on a staff. And that was the question. Now, before you do that, you need to rule your five lines and you have your four spaces. Good. Now, assuming you are not having a manuscript to do, to do that, you use uh, an exercise book. Now, the lines and the spaces of the exercise books are too big that when you are drawing it, it will not be nice. So what you do is that after taking three lines, you are going to divide the spaces, that's one here and one here. Then you get your what? Five lines and four spaces. Then what you are doing is that you are drawing 10 treble clefs on the staff. Good. So you start from here, that's one. So you draw your first clef. You can decide to rule a line here or leave a space and move on to the second until you get the 10 clefs we talked about. Kelvin did very well. He had all correct. Blessing Kobna also did well, but she had a little mistakes. She was not told to add the alphabet to the lines, but she did so. So uh, Kelvin, you had 100%, and I'll give Blessing Kobna 60%. For those who watched and did not submit their works, I entreat you to do so next time. Thank you. So we are continuing. Now we know the difference between music and noise. We said music is an organized sound and noise is an unpleasant sound. That's the difference. And we learned that we have some symbols and signs used in music theory. Good. After that, I said that Five lines and four spaces without any clef is termed as a staff. But the moment you put a clef 
inside a staff, the name changes. Okay, good. Now we have two types of clefs. That's the J clef or the treble clef, the F clef or the bass clef. Good. Now we know the differences. So today we are going to join both the treble clef or the treble staff and the bass staff together. Good. So we have our five lines. As usual. Okay, so if I put a treble clef inside the staff, it is termed as treble staff. If I put a bass clef in a staff, it is termed as bass staff. Now, the combination of both the treble staff and the Bass staff is known as grand stave. I said it is known the combination of both the treble staff and the bass staff is known as what the grand stave. Now we were able to go on the keyboard last time, but the same keyboard can be seen here. How is it possible? Now, I told you that in music, we use the first seven letters of the alphabet, English alphabet. That's A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And I told you we don't have any H, no I, apart from these seven letters here. Okay, alphabet, sorry. So, I told you that on the treble staff, the lines of the treble staffs are E, G, B, D, and F. That is, every good boy deserves favor. Now, the lines, the spaces are F, A, C, and E. That's, Father Abraham can eat. And on the base staff, good boy deserves favor always, and Amma can eat. Eat Gary. Good. Now, between this staff and this staff, there is a space here. And definitely, alphabetically, when you are doing or you are constructing a staff, you need to ha have what? All the qualities. Now, let me combine this space to the lines here to join the ones up. Okay, so we have our G here. Definitely here will be B, A, A, sorry. Then we have our B, C, D, E, F, G, and A again. Now, alphabetically, from A, we go straight to B. Now, there is a space here. And this first line is E. This last line too is A. Now, between these two lines, there is a space. So if this is A, then definitely our space is going to be what? B. Now, let's come back. This is E. Between this line and this line, there is a space here. So be beneath E, there will be a D. Okay. So now they are all sharing this space. So who is the owner of this very space? But there is somebody who can divide these people into equal halves. And this is called a ledger line. It is called what? A ledger line. Now, the ledger line will divide this into two. Let me have it here. Good. Now, alphabetically, from B, where do we go? We go to C. From C, where do we go? We go to D. So you could see that from G, we go to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, back to A, B, C, and it climbs like that. Okay. So what the ledger line does is that it divides the base staff or the treble staff from the base staff. This 
in music is called middle C. And this middle C can be found on the what? Piano or the keyboard. And what it does is that when you are playing a piano or something, it divides the both uh, hands. That's the left hand and the right hand. So the duty of the middle C is to show you where your right hand and your left hands are going to be. Okay, so today when we go to the piano or the keyboard, I'm going to show you where our middle C is. So as I said, the middle C divides the treble staff from the bass staff. And this middle C can be found on the keyboard. So today I'm going to show you where the middle C is. Okay, so as I said, this is a grand stave. A grand stave. And I said this line is called ledger line. And it has given us the difference between the treble staff and the bass staff. Okay, so the line, uh, uh, the space above the fifth line of the uh, bass tape is B, then the middle C, then we go to our D. That's the line, a space beneath the first line of the treble staff. Okay, so this is where we end our lesson for today. I'm going to give another work. We now know the names or the alphabet names given to each and every line and spaces of the treble staff and the bass staff. So this is the question. Number one, what is the alphabet name for the second line of the treble stuff okay so if you think it is g or it is q you write the answer for me all right so number two so what is the difference between music and noise the whatsapp number is zero two four nine zero nine ninety two sixty two and the name is nicholas welcome again this is our keyboard now we learned the other time that the right fingers and the left fingers have their numbers okay We had the opportunity to touch the piano or the keyboard and our five fingers were able to hit a note. Okay. As we did on the board, I said there's something called middle C. So we are going to find where our middle C is on the keyboard. Okay. Now, this is our middle C. This is our middle C. So from C, alphabetically, you go to D, and you go to E, and you go to F, G, you go to A, you go to B, and C again. Okay, so as I told you, when we are running a major scale on the piano or the keyboard, it is eight notes, but we have only five fingers. So I said that. We are going to use three fingers first, then later five will continue. So this is what we are going to do. So we have our C, D, E, then we turn. The first finger will come to the F, G, A, B, and C. Okay, so we are starting again. Middle C, C, D, E, then F and G, A, B, and C. Yes, I know some of you don't have a keyboard at home. So this is what we are going to do. 
I'm going to show you a simple keyboard here on the board. Then you also try and draw it and practice what we are doing here. You have your line. Okay, so now on the keyboard, we have two different colors on the keyboard. That's black and white. Good. So you could see black, uh, white here and a black here. Good. So we assume the top ones are the black keys. Okay. These are the black keys. So we are taking this as our C, the middle C. We are taking this as our middle C. So from C, you go to D. E, F, G, A, B, and the last here will be what? C. Here too is C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So you could see that the alphabets are being repeated. So if the keyboard is long as here to Kaneshi, you can have the same alphabets being repeated. Good. So we assume this is our middle C. And as I told you earlier on, we are going to use our fingers. So we assume this is our first finger, second, third. Then we come to first finger again, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, and fifth finger. Okay, so this is our fingers. So as I'm playing on the keyboard here, you can also assume or imagine it as you've drawn. So this is our middle C, that's the first finger, D, E, then the first finger will come again, thank you for your time, but before then, send your answers to the number on the screen, and sanitize your hands every 20 minutes if possible and wear your nose mask whenever you go out thank you bambini okay. hello my bambini kids mommy's daddy's here now daddy's our teachers mommy's our teachers all right we are going to learn how to write poems we did something the last time if you remember we even learned a song a hand washing song do you remember can i hear someone singing in the house Oh, all right. You remember Auntie Amos Kokoj's voice? Today we are going to learn another one. Have a look at this for me. You know what it is, right? Good. We are supposed to use this whenever we are stepping out to help reduce coronavirus, all right? So we are going to learn something about that too. Another song about wearing the mask. Good. And then this is how it goes. Let's try. You can see two. X, sorry, at the end of each line, it means you are going to see that line twice. Okay, so let's go. We are going to use the same thing. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row. Remember that? Good, let's go. Let me start singing the whole thing so that I can keep up with me. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, mask will help reduce the spread. Mask will help reduce the spread. We can all save lives. We can help save lives. Let's go over again. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Beautiful. I can see some angels. I can hear some angels singing. Lovely. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go. Good. So let's start from the top. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Oh, lovely. My angels are singing. Better than Auntie Emma, right? Let's add the others. Mask will help reduce the spread. Mask will help reduce the spread. Good. So let's start. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Wear, wear, wear your mask. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, mask will help reduce the spread. 
Mask will help you reduce the spread. The last one is we can help save lives. We can help save, save lives. Sorry, okay. That's very good. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> Lovely. So remember, we are supposed to wash our hands, use our sanitizers, wear our mask. And the other one is what? Social distancing. Make sure you are apart. The other person is apart, so we help reduce coronavirus, all right? Good. So let's move on for, with today's lesson. We are going to learn how to write a color poem. A color poem. Let's, let's, what is a poem at all? Remember I told you our musicians, the rapatis mainly, they use poetry, they use rhymes, all right? A poem is a piece of writing that expresses our feelings and our ideas using imaginative language. So I, if I feel like writing something about adolescence, coronavirus, whatever I want to write about, I can express my feelings and my thoughts through the poems. Very, very simple. So what do you call a person who writes a poem? Anyone? Is mommy going to answer or daddy? All right. The person is called a poet. All right. A poet. Right. So we are going to start with a color poem. You are going to tell us your favorite color. And that's what you are going to use. Right, my favorite color is red. Oh my God. Auntie Emma likes red. What do you like? So you're going to use your favorite color to write your poem. Now you're going to think about things that are red. Okay. So on the screen, if you have a look, hey, I forgot to ask you, your exercise books and your pens, are they ready? Write something. So I've written red apples, red books, red shoes, red bags. Those are the things that came to mind when I decided to write about my color red, my favorite colors. Right, so let's see how it goes. When you finish with that, you're going to use describing words. And describing words are adjectives, all right? So you're going to add the adjectives to the color and the apples or the nouns that you have. So let's look at the screen again. We have sweet red apples. First of all, I wrote red apples. And then to describe the apples, I added what? Sweet. Secondly, I wrote, I wrote about red books. What can we get to describe red books? And I wrote what? New. That's an adjective. Then we have red shoes. Ladies love shiny shoes, all right? So I added shiny to the red shoes. And then to complete my poem, I said, all in what? A red bag. So my poem goes like this. Sweet red apples, new red books, shiny red shoes, all in my red bag. Lovely. So if your color is black or blue, you're going to use that color to write your poem. All right? And you are going to do it easily. Like I said, even the cages, they can do it better. Very good. Let's move on. Instead of using a color, you can decide to use numbers as well. Okay. So where we have the describing words or where we have the colors, we put numbers. So we had sweet apple, new books, shiny shoes, all in my bag. Now we are going to replace the colors or the um, yes, the colors with the numbers. So I have one sweet apple, two new books, three, wow, shiny shoes, and all will go into my what? Bag. All right. So very simple ways of writing poems. And I know you've written something down and you are going to write. And I am going to mark them later. Mommy, daddy, remember, I have given you the mandate. You are teachers. So you are going to help out with the writing. You have to do something in the house for me. You are going to write your own color poems. And then remember the number poems as well. You are going to write that. And I have to see it. Remember, Auntie Yama will be in that corner. If you hear some breeze or feel some breeze in the room, that will be Auntie Yama checking whether you are doing it, okay? So you are going to write the poem for me. Take a snapshot, whichever way you do it. Send it to my number, 0578. 068966. That's Auntie Yama's number. And then the Bambini number, it's always at the bottom of the screen. 
you can send it there too and i'll be ready ever ready i, I can even wh whoever has finished bring it now i'm marking it now okay so i'll be waiting for it and i'll be marking and then you get the feedback too to know whether you wrote in the end some of the poems might be read here on bambini and then you sit in the house and feel very very happy so thank you very much but then let's remember we have to observe all protocols wear our mask remember our mask song wearing the mask song that we have learned good we are washing our hands we are using sanitizers and then we are distancing ourselves all right physical distance or social distance we have to distance ourselves right so until next time this is Antia me again and bye bye